Okay, here we go. So if tell me if they can hear me and can see my slides. I guess it will take a second to jump into this session. Discussion forum. Okay. So I'll, without further ado, I'll start uh, on CVCRM and Drupal 9. So welcome, everyone. There are two of us presenting today. So Morgan from Queensland Art Gallery and Gallery of Modern Art, and myself from Tamara Elephant Studio. We are both from Brisbane. So we, what today we're going to talk about uh, CVCRM, what it is, what sort of integration does it have, I'll talk a bit about functionality, I'm going to do a quick Drupal 9 demo. Uh, Morgan going to cover case study, um, and then we're going to wrap up. So what is CVCRM? Uh, in fact, what is CRM? So the CRM stands for Constituency Relationship Management in this particular case. But uh, overall, the big umbrella is uh, Customer Relationship Management. Uh, CVCRM is an open source software written in PHP. It was developed for the last 15 years, and it's an alternative to things like Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's open source and free to use. So uh, uh, it became a popular, more popular, I guess, when, once it's um, been integrated with Drupal 7, and it was quite a popular um, integration. So if you head to drupal.org and see a Drupal CRM, there's a lot of resources to check out how you can integrate it with um, different versions of Drupal and why it's not actually a module and extension, but the system of its own. So uh, then there were extensions and integration with other popular uh, PHP content management system like Joomla, uh, WordPress, and there are also integrations as well as plugins for those systems. So if you're using any of those systems, you can go and check them out. And uh, in the last couple of years, there was integration with Drupal 8, and now it hit the was its integration with Drupal 9. So as I said, it's a complete integration. It's two systems working together, and I'll show you during the demonstration. Uh, there is also a web form uh, integration with CVCRM that was released not that long ago. So you can head to Drupal.org website and uh, check it out. So without further ado, we'll jump into functionality. And if you never use CRM or CVCRM in this case, we'll um, uh, have a look what it does. So first, it has contacts. So uh, what does contact do? You can create new individual, new household, new organization. Uh, you can create new activity. Activity involves uploading the data, matching the fields. Uh, you can create new emails or new user groups. Uh, in fact, when you import, um, uh, you can uh, create um, about the groups. You can have a static group and smart group. Smart group is more like safe searches. So you have a criteria where you filter uh, specific uh, contacts. You can have a tags which you can uh, create tag and then tag different things like users and others. Uh, you can also import contacts and activities. And importing part is very important part of the CRM. If you haven't used it before, they actually uh, uh, do a lot of stuff behind the scenes, like deduping, so meaning uh, matching the same contacts with different emails with the same email. So you can do all that from this. Uh, part of um, CVCRM. The next part is contributions. So what are contributions? Contributions um, uh, can be uh, campaign contributions. It can be uh, pledges. It can be uh, uh, membership fees. So uh, you can also create from this section, you can also create contribution pages and campaign pages. So if you're in specific campaign, or if you do a specific contribution, you can do all that. You can also set up uh, price sets for that. The next part is uh, events. So events are pretty straightforward. So you can actually create a specific event. Um, and uh, then you can uh, also create um, paid event, free event. You can have event templates if you're doing all of those. And you can have um, template reports. So all of this stuff I was covering before, you can also you know, search and group together and provide specific reports. 
Uh, the next part, which is very important part of the CRM is mailing. So mailings, this particular case um, involved uh, creating templates for mail campaigns and SMS campaigns. Uh, then you can actually create campaigns itself. So if you use anything that CRM or something like campaign management, like campaign monitor or um, uh, MailChimp, uh, you can do all that. The interesting bit here is also um, A-B testing. So you can actually can do A-B testing. Uh, and for those who doesn't know what A-B testing is, is um, creating two different versions of the same campaign and sending it to different types of groups and seeing the results, which outcomes better depending on your campaign. It also has a very, very good uh, MailChimp integration plugin. So you can actually plug in and MailChimp would be responsible for sending your emails and campaigns. Uh, membership section. So membership section, again, creating new membership, collecting membership fees, setting up different membership levels, all that is kind of uh, covered by a membership section. Reports. So pretty straightforward. Everything we talked before, you can uh, build different types of reports uh, based on the relationship, based on different types of um, data you created. Uh, few other things there is this, this quite heavy administration section so once you install it you can go and click around and um, see uh, things and how to modify them create different um, data structures list and so on and so forth uh, there is a big help section it's online so you can head to cvcrm site or you can click from support menu and head to the support pages and there is a big, big, big extension uh, uh, library. So you can head to cvcrm.org slash extensions and um, browse the different extensions. So it's not what I just show. There is much, much more to CVCRM than that. So that concludes um, the uh, just demonstration of the features that are out of the box. And I'll quickly going to do a quick demo for you. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, CVCRM is an integration with Drupal. So here's Drupal 9, uh, and it's all installed by uh, the composer. I'll omit the installation section from this presentation and quickly show what's actually integratable. So first, uh, contacts. So once you go to people and try to add a new contact, you would actually, uh, once you enable the extensions for CVCRM, you will see the different user. And while this one is loading, I'll go to my extension section. Uh, if I'll type CVCRM, you can see that CVCRM contains two kind of module, integration modules. So it's core, but the theme would be enabled by itself. So back to the user, when we're creating a new user, you can see a standard Drupal form, but now you can also see a CVCRM uh, section. Uh, this is this data will go into CVCRM for all of your contacts, and then that's how contacts are integrated. Uh, so another part that actually on a Drupal side is when you're in appearance, you can select which theme are you using for CVCRM. For example, uh, I'm using Clara for both, but if you want to switch to seven, you you can do that, and it will uh, once you click on CVCRM, it will change the look and feel. So now to the CVCRM itself. So once I click on CVCRM in the menu, we're going into CVCRM system right here. So I can go and create new individual, which is me. We are. You can also see I can create a current employer here. So at the moment, if I look for uh, uh, organizations that previously added, I um, can see the list. If I want to add the new organization, I would go here and create new organization. So say GABA, save. It's a similar contact found. So it's actually a found uh, uh, that I already created the GABA. So now if I'll try, 
do. You can see I created two gavels, but you can see, you saw the Dedubin method where it actually say, hey, you already have a similar type of organization. So I'll leave it here, the demo, and pass it on to Morgan because we're really uh, limited on time. I'm not gonna, uh, uh, we're not gonna switch the slides. We're gonna go off my slides and over to Morgan. Thanks, bud. Cool. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my experiences implementing it uh, at a previous workplace. And also just recently, I went through an assessment process for, um, you know, choosing a new CRM for where I currently work. CPCRM wasn't actually successful there, but I think there's lessons learned for where it would be a really good fit. So um, we'll just move to the next slide. Sorry, Glenn. Um, here we go. So I previously worked at the Western Australian Museum over in Perth. And back in 2010, we were looking for a CRM. We just implemented a brand new Drupal 6 instance. Um, and we ended up settling on CVCRM because of its integration with Drupal. And um, it also, for an open source product, was probably the best one out there. Now, it's being replaced right now with um, another system, which is uh, more integrated with um, the physical management of the museum site itself. However, um, it was in place for almost 10 years. That in, um, It got upgraded to Drupal 7 while I was still there. I left in 2015, but it, it ran exhibition ticketing, it ran all of our mail outs, it ran everything. So it was a very robust kind of system to, uh, to manage the uh, museum's um, requirements. So I think that was a very successful um, implementation. Um, and we even sold exhibition tickets through it uh, and provided like a point of sales interface built in Drupal. So when I started here at the uh, Queensland Art Gallery, Gallery of Modern Art, um, we are looking at modernizing our uh, constituent relationship management. So I went through a similar process of assessing uh, requirements um, and immediately did think of CVCRM because of the success that I had over in Western Australia there. So ultimately, we ended up going with a different system, but I do think there's some really important lessons learned that I can share. So on the next slide, I kind of went through our high-level requirements. Um, of those requirements, we had 110 kind of lower-level requirements. So they're broken up into, um, you know, from events management to volunteer management to membership management, right through to some very specific things like um, uh, organizing sessions with our uh, public programs and uh, taking tours through. So what we ended up doing with that, um, so that's on my next slide, sorry, Glad, um, is running around 11 systems through that end-to-end -end process. Um, we developed a whole bunch of user stories around all of those and um, looked at what was really important. Now, I'm um, not for commercial reasons. I won't actually say who was uh, who we ended up going with, but I did look at a number of open source platforms. Um, so one of the guests, the back in the day, the big open source was um, Sugar CRM, um, and then there was Civi CRM, which was more for the not for profit sector. Sugar CRM split into Sweet CRM, which is the open source kind of core that kept going, and then Sugar CRM is um, you can still pay for. Um, so Sweet CRM was one that uh, was in the open source space. VTiger is another open source one that we assessed. Both of them were much more focused in that kind of commercial space, your kind of customer relationship management area. So Civi was the strongest of the open source. When you look at some of the commercial platforms, again, I won't be using names, they often have not-for-profit kind of cores that you can use. We're not a not-for-profit per se, but we have a not-for-profit uh, fundraising uh, arm. And it's it's a that's where the niche it's kind of competing against so when we did go through all of these um it was really strong in a lot of areas like uh constituent management was really good um the, the to be honest the mail sent out from city crm it's not it's not as well maintained as say um mailchimp would give so it is better that you integrate with something that's a bit more specialist in reaching those kind of core areas so that's why Civi having that MailChimp integration was really important. So 
you know, we did the 110. Um, it took us about three months to go through all of the requirements and assess all of the platforms. And but if we go to my final slide where I talk about the uh, how the assessment went, um, I I could see. In, uh, I remember what I wrote, so I'll keep talking to it. Uh, I could actually see an alternative reality where we did implement the VCRM. Um, I kind of went to our executive with three paths, one of which was, well, we try and really own this problem space ourselves and we use CVCRM to, to uh, guide all of our solutions. Um, I saw a second path whereby we use the ultimate solution that we did um, and saying that, well, that's going to be a little less hands off because it's more easily configurable um, and it's a, a little less uh, intensive for us to maintain. And ultimately, that's what we went with. So. The strongest attributes that we found for this one is the free, like when you get to the licensing of uh, the commercial CRM, particularly if you don't get the not-for-profit discount, which um, not everyone will honor, um, it, it gets huge. And when you're a not-for-profit, um, again, we're a gallery, but there are lots of not-for-profits who use it, that is super important. And often they charge on either numbers of users or numbers of contacts that you have in the system. So if you're an organization that has a lot of volunteers, um, again, not, not myself, but if you are an organization that's mostly volunteer run and you have 10 or 12 people that really need to access it, you're paying for all of those licenses. And believe it or not, 10 or 12 will add up to be a huge part of what a not-for-profit's looking at. Look, it's quite easily customizable. Vlad very quickly showed the uh, relationships and custom field attributes, a bit like if you're doing a content type in Drupal, you can pretty much use an entity reference and you can do directional relationships and add attributes. They're a little bit tricky to integrate into the web form Drupal module, but you can do it quite easily. And look, it does memberships and campaigns really well. So that's probably the strongest thing. Pledge management, for example, where there's going to be a pledge that's paid off over multiple years or you've got fundraising campaigns. Look, its weakest attributes, and this is really why we didn't go down there, is the in-house management component is fairly high. Like, you really do need to configure it. You get it out of the box, it's pretty basic. You can do a lot with it by integrating with Drupal and web forms and doing lots of other things, but you need to make that investment and you need to really understand where what it's good at and where you need to be using other applications. The integrations with other platforms, like, look, if you get something like um, a Zapier or Integromat, where you can just grab fairly common things that have APIs and just wrap them around and get them talking to other things, that can make it a lot easier for your non-technical users to build those integrations. Really, there is an API or play with it. It's you know, but you are building building it yourself, so it required a bit more upkeep in that sense. And probably the biggest one is the workflows and automations that. Um, the smart groups, we use them extensively at the museum. Oh. They were, they're were they really good um, because you might have some point scoring mechanism that when certain uh, constituents qualify, they enter a group because they're there and then you can kick off an activity like send them an email or put them in uh, to an interest group of some description. That stuff's all there, but it's still not as uh, as robust as some of the um, some of the other things out there. So. Our on balance, look, we went through the eleven. It was one of it was right up towards the top, but um, it didn't end up being the successful uh, one that we went with. But I still had a lot of fun assessing it, and um, I really enjoyed uh, seeing that it had moved beyond the Drupal seven realm. Incidentally, I, I did speak to some people when I was doing that assessment, and it seems most people now run CVCRM with WordPress, and a lot of that was because um, these not for profits don't have a lot of money. And the upgrade, like a lot of smaller companies, from seven to eight was a big deal. So a lot of them have actually moved. Instead of going to eight and nine integrated, have actually gone to WordPress with Civi. But um, nevertheless, it's still, if, you, if you're a civic institution, um, it and uh, you, you really do need to just talk to your constituents in a, in a way. It's the way to go. Oh, 30 seconds. Okay, well, that's the end of really what I had to say. I concluded in that process, so we should now open for questions, not many of them. Yep, so mostly people asking about comparing the CRM to another CRMs. I only have uh, uh, experience with uh, Salesforce at the moment, and uh, it's actually quite comparable. Uh, also, people asking, why would you go to Drupal over WordPress for it? Morgan, do you want to take this one?
It was built for Drupal originally. Thanks, everyone.